Charlton Sports Weekly coming to you live from Anytime Fitness. Glenn Hughes here with Stan Wilds. Had us a little busy week last week, I guess. Uh, yeah. A little wreck action. Uh, junior high, JV, JV, and varsity. That's right. Um, wreck teams went to Hilliard last week and played. Um, I didn't go, but my sources tell me all of our teams won down there, so... Uh, I think a couple of them played the Heger teams. I think one of them played a Brantley team. So uh, this Saturday is a full-fledged day of action out of Indian Field. I think we'll be we, working this Saturday. I think we got seven ball games starting at 10 o'clock. Kids will be jacked up on sugar from candy from the festival parade and then go play football. That's right. They, they need to bring me some of that sugar probably because uh -huh. I'm probably going to need some by the end of the day. <laughs> little candy and some coffee for you. That's know. right. Um, the Bethune Braves uh, played yesterday at home against uh, Callahan Middle. <coughs> uh, played better than they had before, but still came out on the short end of a 14 to nothing score. So I believe they've got one, one game remaining. They go to Callahan, uh, I guess it's Tuesday of next week. So that wrap. Maybe they can redeem themselves. Right. I mean, they're one and four on the season, so they need to at least end the season on a bright note. Yeah. Hopefully they can. Um, seems like one year we'll have an out of this world junior high team, and the next year we'll be <laughs> cellar dwellers. That's right. So uh, hopefully those kids who are in seventh grade next year will be uh, undefeated at this point. That's true. Uh, the JV uh, uh, last week they went to Callahan, played West Nassau, and they had a shootout against, I believe the final was 44 to 38 or 36, something like that, so I think Tevis Dasher threw four touchdown passes, uh, I think he ran, a, he ran an onside kick back for a touchdown. Uh, so we outlasted them in the shootout. Right. Now, it was back and forth. The last two minutes of the game, there was probably about four touchdowns scored, I well, think. <laughs> that may have been worth the price of admission right. and the drive down. Though. Like I said, they sent me a copy of the video, so I watched it at the house. So it was it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, so they're undefeated still? I believe they're 4-0, and I believe. Yeah. Um, they're off this week, don't play. And I forget, it seems like they may go to Ware County, or Ware County comes to us on the 18th, all right? And that would be next, next next Thursday yeah. then. Next Thursday. Okay. A um, little bit of breaking news here concerning our Charlton County Maidens. Yeah. Everybody assumed our season was over after our last regular season game, but somehow or another, power rankings, final power rankings came out today. Georgia High School posted playoff brackets, and we squeaked in as the number 16 seed. Just be just just, just got in. Right. That's the good news. The bad news is they're playing top ranked Gordon Lee, and I'm sure most of our viewers don't know where Gordon Lee is, but it is in Chickamauga, Georgia, which you probably don't know where that is either. But if you know where Chattanooga, Tennessee is, it's not far from there. So, Right across the line. It's, I believe it's the county right under Chattanooga, I believe. But uh, I believe our girls will go there next. I think they'll play next Wednesday, I believe is what it is. I hope they leave Tuesday if they take I'm pretty. Sure, I'm pretty sure they will. Um, but I just happened to call Coach Baxter when I saw it, and he was not even aware of it at the time. That is breaking news. So, so he said, oh, well, I better get on the phone and start calling some people. But congratulations to the Maidens, uh, second year in a row for making the state playoffs. Hopefully they can get on a run like the football team has and continue that. That's right. Every year just be a state playoff uh, uh, contender, and, uh, and hopefully before too long we'll have uh, some number one seeds uh, to ourselves and uh, – host some games here and, and get a get a softball championship going. Here. Right. Um, I think we mentioned last week of our softball team, I think most of the year we've started probably five freshmen mm -hmm. on the field at once. So 
Now the future looks bright for them. So a lot of experience. That's right. So, uh, but right now we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll come back and talk some Indian football. Anytime Fitness Folkston, located in the Harvey Shopping Center, has everything you need to stay in shape or get that look you've always wanted. Upright at conventional tanning beds, a Zumba room, weight room, and state-of-the-art treadmills. They also have supplements and tanning supplies. Anytime Fitness Folkston is also the proud sponsor of Charlton Sports Weekly with Glenn Hughes and Stan Wilds. See Stan to get fit anytime. The Folkestone Pharmacy, your original hometown pharmacy for over 45 years, is located at 3885 Main Street. At Folkestone Pharmacy, we accept most major insurance coverage, including AARP, WellCare, Medicaid, Amerigroup, and many more. We also have a $1 value aisle for everyday items such as health and beauty, cleaning, and even snacks. Stop by and check us out today. Now, let's go get them Indians. United First Federal Credit Union has been a part of Charlton County since 2001 and has been providing great service to our members since 1943. United First now offers mobile banking and email alerts. Mobile banking lets you check your balance from your cell phone while email alerts notifies you when a significant event happens in your account. Both are easy to set up and are free to United First members. United First helps you afford life. All accounts are federally insured by NCUA. Welcome back to Charlton Sports Week here at Anytime Fitness. Uh, talk a little bit Indian football. Uh, last week they made a long road trip to Turner County and it was a longer road back home. That was, uh, Glenn, I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush here, man. That was the worst I think we played in the regular season. Uh, I don't know, 15 years maybe? It's been a while since we I, didn't perform that well. Yeah. I just, uh, there was not much offense. Uh, I know Tyree Savage ran the ball well. He was our only offense. Right. Um, I would think he had how many yards? I believe um, he ended up with 151 yards rushing. His second straight 100-yard game, so. Good night for him uh, under the circuit, you know. Considering he was the only thing that we had working, right. um, our passing game was, I, I guess we left that on the practice field here yeah. Thursday. We didn't load that up on the bus. It was just uh, um, just a bad, I, teams, I know teams have a bad game. We got up real high for Wilcox oh. County, beat them, um, probably beat a team that night that had twice the athletes we have um and we go to turner and not taking nothing away from them um but they, they didn't have any more athletes than we have no they just uh executed a little bit better and uh, uh we looked a step behind all night all night in any faucet of the game so but it's just you know in the past Charlton County pulls up on the bus, walk out on the yeah. field, the other teams beat. You know, it's not that case anymore. It's not that. People, people don't fear Charlton County like they no. used to. So um, you got to be mentally ready to go soon as you, you know every week because you can't overlook anybody. If and and we can't overlook it. We got four games left. All we can do is win those four. Whatever happens with uh, elsewhere in the region happens. Right. But we got each week, our guys need to prepare for the team they got to play. I know we were talking before the show, we, you know, Telfair has been a seller dweller for years. We can't even overlook them this right. year. Uh, they, if I'm not mistaken, they were beating Clinch County I remember at halftime yeah. a couple of weeks ago. So um, we're going to have to play four quarters at the four, all four games we have left. And let the chips fall where they may right. for the playoff seedings. Um, we do have the uh, the um, the rankings uh, for the high school BCS <laughs> here, um, and we're third in the state as far as the points rankings go. We moved up two spots after a we, loss. <laughs> we lost, and moved up two spots, um, but five teams in our region 
are in this top 16. So, right, so it's going to be a battle all the way. And we need to stay in this top 16. So, uh, you if, prefer to stay in the top eight. Cause yeah, if you, exactly. If you get in the top eight, you're guaranteed at least the first round home game. Yeah. And if we, um, hopefully, we can win these last four games, and hopefully um, Wilcox or Irwin will beat Turner County. Or both. Or both. Or <laughs> even Clinch County, hopefully. And um, if we win out, then... We still got a chance we to win the region. We still got a chance to be the region champs and have, uh, you know, that number one seed out of the region for some home games here. So, hopefully, that's how things will pan out. Who knows? That's right. Um, this year has been a heckle and jekyll season. <laughs> I mean, if I'm not mistaken, we win the, in our our odd number games mm -hmm. and lose the even number games. That uh, must mean it's our week to win then. Yeah, this must be. <laughs> Uh, hopefully next week that bye week will shake things That's up. That's it. That'll we throw, can, throw yeah, the jinx all of them losses out. So, but just going over some of our uh, region opponents as far as their power rankings. Um, we'll start off with uh, statewide. Uh, Dewey County's number one. Lincoln County two, and we're number three. Uh, then you go to number that six is Irwin. Yeah. Seven is Turner. Wilcox is 10, and Clinch is 13. So, like you said, that's five five teams out of our region that are yeah. in the basically the top 13. Yeah. So, we're definitely in the SEC of Class A <laughs> regions. That's it. Um, no doubt about that. Um, and like you said, we used to pull up, and before the buses even turned off, the other team was, was they was beat. Know, it was a it was a psychological game, and I've always thought that out here, where our visitors' locker room is at the field, right. those signs right. are strategically placed, placed there. So when those kids get off the bus and they're walking in their locker room, they look up, see all those state championship, those region championship yeah, sure. signs, and it yeah, is that that's all they can think about until kickoff, and right. then they've done beat themselves. But that's not you know kids nowadays. Um, I like to say it's a, it's a little bit different than it was 10, even maybe 6, 7 years right, ago. Right, I agree. Uh, kids nowadays ain't playing two or three sports. They'll concentrate yeah, on man. one sport, a lot of these kids. And and uh, these kids, man, I'm telling you, I've, I see some of their Facebook posts. They don't lack confidence. Whether oh, they no. can perform or not on the field, they're not <laughs> lacking confidence. So... Um, you know, uh, it's a it's a different day and age in high school sports these days. It is 100 percent. I agree. Um, I guess we can talk a little bit about our opponent this week, uh, Lanier County. I think you've seen a little bit, haven't you? Yeah, I've seen a little bit. Um, I, I know I seen cool. some of Turner last week, <laughs> and I would have thought that you know I knew they were going to throw the ball. I knew they were going, you know, run it out of that pistol formation. Right. Um, but we seen a little bit of that against Bradwell. True. And I thought Bradwell had better right. athletes, better offensive line than than Turner County. So I figured, you know, this will be close to first half. And then if you look, I, I and I thought about this when I watched them online some last week, and I really thought about this when I was sitting in the stands before kickoff. I think they only had maybe 30 players, uh, or a little over 30. I didn't even. I don't even remember looking across the field and. And I was thinking, well, I know a lot of these kids are going to go both ways, Please. so it it may be close in the first half, but we should pull away in the second half, and we just never, we never got off the bus. It we could like. we could we could get the ball to midfield, yeah. and then we'd stall out. So yeah, uh, but but. but um, Lanier, um, I know they've got a quarterback that's a they've fairly got, good athlete. They've got some pretty decent athletes. Um, um, I think he's a uh, he's big punt and kickoff returner too. Uh, um, if we can contain him, we should be able to shut their run down. Um, 
I don't think they're going to pass the ball too much. No, I don't say. remember them passing we should, too much uh, last year. We shouldn't have to worry too much about the pass. But if we can shut him down from getting around the, the yeah. corners, we should be able to uh, to contain them. But, hey, the way things have been going, who <laughs> knows, man? Um, who knows? Well, hopefully we can just line it up and smash mouth right down the field. And hopefully... I'd like to see us come out, man, and put uh, eight men on the line, right. quarterback, fullback, running back, and just um, pound it on them. Run it, run it off tackle. Run some counter plays, some trap plays, and until they stop Copy. it, just eat the clock up. I don't care if we win six to nothing. Right. Wins a win at this point <laughs> in the season. So, um, I expect us to win. I always expect us to win. Uh, and I, I sure hope we do, because um, that's too long of a ride back. I heard that. To come back hearing the boys complain. So um, it's bad enough riding back with them. If, if the, <laughs> like Turner County, they didn't have showers. So oh, that was nice. That's horrible. You ride the bus, so you, 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 you got it good, way even worse than I did. Get a man. good whiff of them. At least I can roll all four windows down. <laughs> so. Anyway, I guess that's probably pretty much wraps up this segment. We'll come back and do our college football picks. Hopefully I can catch back up next week. Okefenokee Rural Electric Membership Corporation offers more than dependable electrical energy at a competitive price. Quality service is provided by a friendly and professional staff trained to meet your every electrical power need, whether residential, commercial, or industrial. If you have any questions or need information, call us at 1-800-262-5131. Okefenokee REMC, owned by those we serve. A proud sponsor of this year's Indian football broadcast. TNT Building Supply is located about a half mile past US-1 and the 301 split, north of Folkestone, right next to Taylor Timber Company. They have everything you need for your home improvement projects. With a wide selection of lumber, hardware, millwork, plumbing, and electrical supplies, concrete and masonry, power and hand tools, nails, and roofing supplies. They also have a large selection of mobile home hardware. TNT Building Supply is a proud sponsor of Charlton Sportsnet. Radio Shack, located at 3885 Main Street, inside the Folkestone Pharmacy, is your local Verizon Wireless authorized agent and Dish Network retailer. Radio Shack carries a variety of computers, tablets, smartphones, and other electronics. The Shack in Folkestone is proud of our student athletes and wishes them the best of luck this season. Now, let's go get them Indians. Welcome back to Charlton Sports Weekly here doing our college football picks. Uh, I took it on the chin last week, so... I'm not going I'm not going to rub it in that the Gamecocks not only beat but just totally obliterated and exposed the dogs for what they truly are. Hey, if you're going to get beat, you might so, as well go hey, all out yeah. doing it. Yeah, you might as well go I mean, go we, to we, the extremes. At least so. that way I knew it was over early and I didn't get my heart broken late in the game, so I got to throw this in for the folks that are always ragging me about being a, a South Carolina fan. And they're all dog fans. For some reason Gator fans Seem like allies, but <laughs> three in a row, three in a row. Just like uh, they said after the game, I think it was Kirk Herbstreet said, uh, he pulled up Spurrier's record against UGA, UGA and it was 14-5, and five, and uh, he said, you know, the University of Georgia might need to consider paying Steve Spurrier some rent <laughs> money each year because he owns them. <laughs> so, so I hope Spurrier stays and... Uh, Continues that trend. That's Nothing right. against the dog fans. They know. Uh, That's right. My buddies, they they know it's all in good fun. So, all right, let's go with this week's picks here. I think I'm down what four games. Now? Four games. I got a three game lead on or a four game lead on you after last week, and we differ. I think on two picks this week. So we got Alabama at Missouri. Missouri uh, got beat by Vanderbilt last week. So Georgia played old man football. Uh, they must have thought Vandy was going to play one foot in the grave football, okay. and they got showed otherwise. They probably want to go not only back to the Big 12, they probably want to go somewhere like Conference USA 
Right. They might fit in better there. I think they played UCF in Conference USA. They and did. Barely won. They struggled in that yeah. one. You're right. They might want to go to the WAC or somewhere. <laughs> Where they don't play defense. Yeah. Uh, I'll take uh, Bama in that. That's a no-brainer. I'll see you can say that's an easy pick. I like said Missouri's probably only chance to win a SEC game now is Kentucky later on in the year. That's so. probably the only shot. Probably right. the only shot then, which brings us to the next game. Kentucky at Arkansas. Uh, probably uh, Kentucky's uh, shown like a quarter here or there of, of, of good football. Arkansas has got to be the biggest disappointment in years in right. college football. Uh, uh, top five team going into the yeah. season. And- I remember watching something preseason with them talking about, um, you know, everybody's talking about, they like everybody talking about Alabama and LSU being national championship contenders when they're sitting right there. Right and poised to, to overthrow them for the West and then the whole SEC and contend for a national championship. I don't know where they was th- what they was thinking or, or even smoking, but uh, it was, they sure ain't playing that way. But uh, well, with all did, that being said, I'm going to take Arkansas. <laughs> well, they did show some signs of life last week, beating Auburn, I, which yeah. is not saying much right now because Auburn's struggling. But. Yeah. I'm with you. I think Arkansas is better than Kentucky, though. Yeah. Maybe one of the few teams in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, and that leads us to Auburn at Ole Miss. That's about two equal teams right here, I believe. I think so. Um, I th- I, 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 Ole Miss kind of impressed me against a- Texas A&M last week. Um, Texas A&M played good the week before. They could have been overlooking Ole Miss. Right. Uh, easily uh but the games at Ole Miss Auburn don't have much offense or defense so I'm gonna go with Ole Miss well this like I said this is one of those toss-up games yeah. and um with me down by four this is ga- a catch up w- game. W- with me down by four <laughs> games I've got to pick something yeah. different to attempt to catch up so come on War Eagles help me there out a little go. bit I'm surprised you didn't pick different on this next game from me, uh, which is uh, Florida at Vanderbilt. You know, Vandy got that big win last right. week over Mizzou. So, uh, you, you sure you don't want to swap picks on that one? On the show, no, but in my heart, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Florida at Vanderbilt. Routinely, Florida struggles, with struggles that. at Vanderbilt when they play in in. They, at Vandy, they struggle um, for some reason. You know, Florida had a, they last week they had a big game, and LSU two. at home. Next week they got uh, Carolina uh, at home. So they could be could be a trap game. This for could them. be a trap game. Uh, but I'm still going with Florida. Yeah, I, much as like I said, like I always have to pick them. Much I hate to say it, um, you know, I got to go for the Gators to win this one. All right. And the next game, this is probably uh, probably the game of the week um, in all of college football. Uh, uh, we got the Gamecocks of South Carolina at LSU. Um, it's going to be a night game, which uh, scares me being a Carolina mm-hmm. fan. For some reason, LSU thinks they got ghosts on the field. It's going <laughs> to trip somebody up. But, uh, um, but I'm not buying into their voodoo, so... Uh, and I I can't pick against Carolina, That's right. so uh, I'm a homer uh, well, like when said, it comes to to Carolina. So I'll take the Gamecocks. Like I said, both teams are coming off big games. Um, of course, LSU lost there. South Carolina won. So uh, and LSU really didn't show too much offense. And, no, they didn't. And Their I don't. Offense was slow. And I'm not thinking they're going to get too much more offense against that South Carolina defense that. I saw too much of last Saturday, so <laughs> so got to pull for South Carolina. All right, and uh, next one is Tennessee at Mississippi State. Uh, Mississippi State is undefeated so far. Right, they're in the top 25. Um, Tennessee has shown glimpses. Uh, they played Florida good for a half. They played Georgia good for three, three quarters. quarters, the last three quarters, quarters. of the game. Um, uh, Mississippi State, I've seen them play. Uh, I've watched them play a couple of games just here and there. I haven't watched the whole game. Right. 
but I have been impressed with their defense. Yes. Uh, they've got a, a very good defense. Um, if the game was in Tennessee, I'd probably go with Tennessee, but uh, I'm going to take Mississippi State. Uh, like I said, the both teams are have shown flashes of brilliance, but I'm with you. It's played at Starkville, which is I had them cowbells ringing. which is in the middle of nowhere. So I know um, I've been there. I've been right <laughs> right through that, right beside that stadium, and it is. It's literally, it's, uh, it looks like you're driving through Waynesville or somewhere, and there's a big football <laughs> stadium and a couple college buildings. But I'm going go Mississippi State. Uh, and this next game, I feel sorry for Boston College. Uh, it's Boston College at Florida State. <laughs> Florida State, every year, they get upset. Um and then they'll come back for a couple of games, play like world beaters. They'll probably stumble somewhere else right. along the way before they play Florida. Uh, but uh, they're gonna be they're gonna be a little perturbed. So I'll take the Seminoles in a in a route. I think say so. Florida State's coming off their upset loss to North Carolina State. Uh, I don't think Boston College has won too many games I to think start with. Won one game. I think they've won so, one game. So. Plus, it's in Tallahassee, so yeah, I have to give them the little the tomahawk there. All right. This next game, both of these teams are in the top 25. Normally, you look at the look at the two teams, and it's yeah. You would think no, it's a blowout, but well, yeah. But I don't think this is going to be too. I think there would be a, this game will be a high scoring game. Texas A&M at Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech, I mean, a lot of people around here probably don't know who they are, but if you follow college football. I've got a high-powered offense. They have a very high-powered offense. Um, I won't be surprised if they pull off this upset. Right. I don't even know if it would be upset if they win. Well, wasn't um, this the game that was supposed to have been played at the very beginning of the season, the hurricane, the hurricane canceled it, it right? Um, I'm going to take Texas A&M, though. I think they've gotten on a roll here. Uh, but they could be on upset alert. Uh, now, Texas A&M's played well lately. The quarterback has played extremely well. That's good. Yeah, I think they just may be a little bit too much, but it's going to be a better game than most people think it is. I know. I kind of hope that game's on TV. All right. Uh, North Carolina at Miami. What's your thoughts, Glenn? Uh, North Carolina has come on strong here. They've cost me a couple games in these picks here. And they probably cost me another one because I'm picking <laughs> against them again. But <laughs> they got to stumble somewhere, huh? I keep hoping. So, uh, <laughs> but Miami has played. They're up and down, up and down. Yeah. Um, you know, let's just hope it's their up week. And what is it? If, if, if it's the same as it's being like with us, this will be their up week. All right, well, I'm hoping uh, so. So I'm going to pull for the Canes there. Well, I still believe North Carolina's the better team. I think they got the better athletes. They can run the ball. They got a good quarterback. They got good receivers, and they got a fairly good defense. So, um, and they got, uh, I believe, they got a better coach. So, I'm gonna go with the Tar Heels. Well, like I said, this is another one of them games where I yeah, got, I got, I got to try to catch you up. Got to. Here. All right, and then uh, I think game day is gonna be at this next game: Stanford at Notre Dame. That's kind of a small rivalry, I it think. It is. Um, uh, academia. Yeah. Um, you got your West Coast smart Alex against your uh, all-around-the-country Catholic smart Alex. Prima donna. So, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but uh, I'm impressed with Notre Dame. Dave? I'm impressed with Notre Dame. I'm impressed with their offense. I'm real impressed with their defense. Uh, I think they they may have the best defensive player um, or one of the best defensive players in the country uh, at linebacker. Um, the kid that's from, he's from Hawaii. Uh, he's number five. Right, I can't, I think, can't think of his name. I know I've seen him on game day a couple times. But uh, um, I'm going to take Notre Dame, man. At this point, it's hard to... Uh, to go against them, against the team. Stanford had to go into overtime and score 40-something, I think 48 or 51 points to beat Arizona. So 
they can't play defense. But Stanford has beat Southern Cal, though. Yeah. So you never know about them, but Notre Dame's been consistent pretty much all year long. So and it's at home. And it's at home, so I'm touchdown gonna... Jesus. That's right. Yeah, and one of those end zones, <laughs> the picture of Jesus with his hands up. So, got to pull for the Irish. Yeah. There you go. All right, so we differ on two picks. Maybe, Good luck. Maybe I can cut the lead in half I this week. I hope I can extend it to six. If it is, we may have to quit this segment next week. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I guess that's going to wrap up this week. Um, make sure to load up your cars and get to uh, Lakeland, Georgia this Friday night. That's right. And you might want to find a place to eat before you get there because I think all they got is the Hardee's in that town for after the game unless you're going to come back through Valdosta. That's so, a long way. <laughs> yeah, that's a longer way. But we'll see you all here next week.